Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Chikowski, and I'm back with my plans and pans. I had a fascinating week last week when I had the great privilege to go to Australia as part of a group of members of Congress, there were 16 of us, who sponsored by the Aspen Institute and funded entirely by not-for-profit organizations to discuss the topic of energy. And we had experts speak to us every morning and much of the afternoon talking about what are the things that the United States and the world needs to do. We talked a lot about various energy sources, about natural gas, about electric energy, about the use of nuclear power, and also, of course, discussing how important it was to continue to go all the way on conservation. So it was a, a very widespread discussion back and forth with these top national experts. And we also had the opportunity to talk to experts from, from their country talking about the things that they are doing and things that we can share and work together on and even learn from. The ultimate goal of the conference was how we can focus on how we can get to net zero carbon emissions by 2050 and the many ways to do that and in the meantime to make sure that we do have available energy in our country, clean and safe. It was a great group of bipartisan members, evenly divided among Democrats and Republicans, working on this issue of energy policy. We spent most of our, our time in Sydney, Australia, which is an absolutely beautiful and exciting city. And we also went to the capital, Canberra, for a couple of days. And we were able to meet with members of parliament, with the person called the Speaker of the House in Canberra. We also went to the embassy. The ambassador, Carolyn Kennedy, was not able to be there because her daughter just had a baby. But we were able to meet a number of people from different embassies while, while we were there as well. We were also able to take a side trip to the port of Newcastle and ride down the river and talk about the role of maritime in energy supply and energy futures as well. We were also able to make a short trip to a wildlife park where we could see some of the creatures from down under that we don't get to see here in, uh, in the United States and particularly focused on koala bears and kangaroos. I was also able to raise the issue with uh, my colleagues on the trip about my piece of legislation along with Congressman Fitzpatrick called the Kangaroo Protection Act. Actually, unfortunately, there is commerce selling kangaroos and kangaroo skin into the United States. We see about 2.5 million kangaroos that are slaughtered in Australia every year for commercial purposes. And what is it used for? for? For shoes, for cleats. And we think that that should not continue, that we do not want to encourage the murder and the slaughter by millions of kangaroos. So I am going to ask all of the members on this trip, plus many others, if they will join me and my partner in getting more sponsors for the Kangaroo Protection Act. I think what you've seen and actually fed by hand a kangaroo, which we were able to do, I think one may be more likely to agree that they should be a protected species. In Congress, we also had uh, an overdue hearing on the issue of privacy, privacy online. You know I've been working on this for years, 
and hopefully we're gonna be getting it moving more quickly. We made a good start in a subcommittee on the Energy and Commerce Committee, discussing things that we want to include in a privacy bill that will make consumers feel safer online. One of the important changes that we have to the current bill that we were voting on in subcommittee is that data brokers who are able to buy and sell information, now consumers will be able to delete their names from all data brokers with simply one click, that you do not want that information about you, often very personal information, you don't want it to be transferred and sold for whatever reason. We were also able to ban targeting of advertising to children and teenagers. We've been really trying to do this for a very long time. And at a hearing fairly recently held in the Senate of the United States, the some of the big tech companies we're apologizing. Yes, we know we haven't done the best that we could to protect our children. Well, apologies are simply not enough. It is time to put into law that they cannot be exploited. And that will be, I'm hoping, in the final bill that we're going to be able to pass, not only out of the House of Representatives, but put on the president's desk as well. There was one thing that I was not so happy about that we don't consider in this legislation. We call it uh, access to biometric information, including fingerprints or facial recognition. These are things that you cannot change. They are with you throughout life and you do not want these big tech companies having that information and it can be used in a bad way. If the facial recognition gets the identification wrong, we have seen that people have been accused of crimes that they didn't commit based on what they say on, on facial recognition. It is more of a problem, it seems. It's been discovered for people of color. So when it comes to the qualities of your personal self, they should not be part of what Big Tech has to use against you. I was also able to go on a site visit to the Swift Child Care Center. Um, it is part of the Early Childhood Alliance of Niles Township. So it's a wonderful organization that deals with infants and toddlers and uh, two-year-olds and preschoolers so that they are ready for school. Now, I think most people understand that 90% of the learning for human beings takes place by the time they're five years old. That's not saying that you can't learn beyond five years old, but all of the infrastructure for doing that, that learning. So early child care is so important and quality early child care. And it's especially important that communities like Niles Township are able to provide that, particularly for low income families to make sure that they can get the advantages, the care, the learning that they need from the earliest of ages. So it was a very uplifting opportunity to see what is going on to make sure that our kids are growing up healthy and well. And it was just wonderful to be at what was called the graduation of parent mentors. What this program does is provide great training for parents to spend two hours a day in the classroom helping teachers and their students. It is really focused mainly on the parents who speak languages other than English. Each one of them came up and spoke, and many of them were from countries all over the, the world and spoke clearly about how important this program was for them and for the students and teachers that they were able to work with. 
So this is a, a, a fantastic program that is done in several places within the state of Illinois and something that should very much be encouraged. So it was a great celebration of the graduation of these people. And I think I felt like it was life changing in many ways because these moms, these mostly moms who came up and, and spoke, I think felt a lot of personal prestige and power as they made their speeches, short speeches with different accents, but all of them saying how important this program was to them. As a former teacher myself, I could see what a wonderful integration of community and family and teachers and students. It was great. As I speak right now, it's evening of D-Day, the, the day that Americans by the thousands and thousands were willing to risk their lives and many to lose their lives. And as we commemorate that and the president made a very strong speech about freedom and the role that the United States played and the heroes of that day, we have to remember that we still have to fight and be prepared to protect our country, our democracy, and justice in the world. So it was a very, very inspiring day. And on this day of protecting democracy, we have to remember that we also have to do this at home to make sure that our country remains strong in favor of our constitution, our democracy, and our rights in the United States of America. It was a very inspiring day for everyone who was there and everyone who observed it, and should be a lesson to all of us about our responsibilities to protect freedom at home and around the world. So that's it for Pans and Plans for today, and I will be back with you next week. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.